Hello everybody, welcome to my session at the Open Source Summit Latin America 2022. My name is João and it's a pleasure to be here talking about machine learning. I know that right now machine learning is a buzzword in a way that every algorithm became something of machine learning right now. But this is not a problem because machine learning help us solve many many different problems. And it can be in our daily lives, it can be in our jobs. And we can use all this to understand and predict some data and some important and valuable information. And this is exactly the point I want to bring in here. We don't need to be super buzzy about artificial intelligence in a way that we start talking about all the conspiracies revolving around evil cyborgs, terminators, and all that human end of humanity. Uh, and we neither need to be super academic and only talk about math. Not that this is a problem. Actually, I'd like to give a shout out to all the mathematicians out there. But this time, let's be very honest and ask this question. How we can implement a very simple algorithm and that tries to learn some patterns and solve the problem that is in this information? Maybe not solve, but gather some clues on how to solve this problem. So, first off, I'd like to introduce myself better and my name is João Valle and I'm a Brazilian engineer. Currently I'm working with open source and cloud native technologies at SUSE. And my daily job is trying to solve challenges for companies around Brazil. I worked for SUSE since 2019 and I'm a graduate of University of Brasilia with a bachelor in communications network engineering. Sometimes I lectures and produces some videos about cloud native technologies for the open source community. And I'm a machine learning researcher. So, today we will be talking about some basic concepts for machine learning and natural language processing. But I would like to make a demo demonstration by the end of the, this presentation showing the experiments I did for this task. And if you are interested in what I did and want to replicate or maybe try something similar, this is the list of things that I used. So I used OpenSource as the underlying operational system for the tests and Jupyter Notebook for organizing and run all the machine learning pipeline. More, I used Python and some important libs like Pandas, NumPy, Scikit-Learn and NL2K so I can do all these, these tests. So, all right, going back to the basics. I want to give us some background of this information spread throughout the media. To understand why it's important to involve machine learning around all this, this problem. And right now, people are very concerned about information spread on social media. And this happens on many different social media platforms. Depending on the country that you live in, you can see that people are more concerned for WhatsApp, like in Brazil. Or if you live in a country like Philippines, people are more concerned for Facebook. This image is showing an interview that the Reuters did last year with 92,000 internet users in 46 countries. And we can see that there is a real concern in that case for the COVID-19 misinformation. This applies for many different themes, not only the pandemic. But the pandemic was something that powered up all these studies about misinformation because we watched some unprecedented amount of information spread throughout all the internet. So, moving in. Traditional media are rapidly losing ground to digital media. This is a fact. And this fact stresses the argument that it's important to focus efforts on the study of the dynamics of the digital media. And social networks drive online and news sharing. This is something that we all know about because we all consume news on the internet today. And the problem is that the veracity of such news is only questioned and perhaps proven after a long period of digital dissemination. There is a term called infodemia that got a bit famous last year and actually by 2020 that 
describes the large flow of information that spreads over the internet on a specific subject. And there are some studies that compare the spread of those informations, like the spread of viruses. And sometimes we see that information spreads much, much more faster than any virus that we observed in the nature in all those years. And this affects the credibility of an entirely journalistic structure, because this can bring negative impacts to the lives of those who consume this news, or the lack of agile strategies to verify and flag those fake news. So, okay, so how can machine learning help us with this problem? Well, machine learning consists in consuming a huge amount of data, sometimes maybe not huge, but consuming some data, analyzing this data, and starts to gather patterns so we can predict future data. And this brings us the question, would it be possible to identify patterns in true and fake news that are already published and try to predict the veracity of future news? So today we are in contact with a huge amount of data, tweets, news, texts, images, videos. When we analyze and transform this data information, we can make predictions. This is the very interesting part about machine learning. And this type of technology can help fact-checking agencies, which are very, very important nowadays, uh, quickly identify news which are with high probability of being false. Thus, we can leave uh, the efforts of those agents to more challenging news uh, that needs a, a more serious uh, work to be investigated. So, starting off our second topic, how machine learning can approach and detect fake news using natural language processing techniques. First off, um, this, is a, this is the three main components in any machine learning pipeline, data, features, and algorithms. Starting off, data consists of the source of information from which we want to obtain patterns. In our case, it's the news extracted from online portals. This data can be anything. Sometimes we can build like an algorithm to identify cats and dogs pictures by an automate way. And what is the data in this case? It's the thousands of photos of cats and dogs that will be pushing through the, through the algorithm and saying to him, learn what a dog is, learn what a cat is. So the data is the piece of information that we want to extract some knowledge. Moving on, we got the features. So features are inherent characteristics of the data that provides some information for the algorithm. Um, in our case, our features are the words that compose such news. So we are going to gather all those words and try to understand how are the dynamics of these words. If a word is appearing more in a type of text, if in case of fake news there is a certain word that appears more frequently, and we can start to understand what is happening by taking these features and processing them. And finally, the algorithm. Well, the algorithm is the method chosen for the task. And today we're going to, to give some emphasis on the passive aggressive algorithm. Uh, I had some really nice results with the passive aggressive. It's not a very famous algorithm, but uh, I think it, it works pretty well with big data. If you have like some big inputs, for example, Twitter or any um, important news agents, you can work with passive aggressive because it works very quickly, very fast, and it's an efficient algorithm, as we're gonna show you in a few moments. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the data. So we have the three main topics, data, features, and the algorithm, starting off with data. I divided the data sets into two. I have the training data set and the test data set. I'm not using a validation data set because the test data set is composed of news that the training data set doesn't have a slight idea of what it is. So I created two different data sets and they all have different news. And the main question that I, that I did back then when I was doing the research at the university was 
it would be possible to train an algorithm, for example, with old news. And for example, we can take a period of five years, maybe 2015 to 2020. And could this algorithm predict if a uh, predict a new is fake or true, for example, published in 2022? So this is what I did. I created this data, this training data set composed of 7,200 news um, from a very important job that some Brazilian researchers did called fake.br. And this is a corpus composed of 3,600 news, real news, and 3,600 fake news that were published by January 2016 and January 2018. And the test data set on the right are composed of 19,440 news. And I gathered the real news from a famous portal of news here in Brazil called G1. And I gathered all the fake news of another news fact checking uh, agency called boatos.org. And these news were published between January 2015 and September 2021. So um, the test the test data set have news from before the training data set and from after the training data set. So I gather news from a very large period to try to understand if the accuracy of the training model would be good with news that it does not have a clue of what it could be. Okay, so how did I do this? Uh, I did a web scraping to create the data sets. Um, I used Python using pandas and the beautiful soup libs. And I started doing this scrape for those portals. I started going there, taking all those news. I didn't make any separations for themes. So I gathered all news, politics, sports, um, many, many more. And created these data sets that I showed you before. Moving on, we got the pre-processing step. Uh, the pre-processing consists of organi organizing the data and cleaning useless characters, for example, like points and commas. So I used Pandas library to manipulate and organize these data sets. One important step is the removal of stop words. By the way, stop words are grammatical structures with little relevance to the algorithm. And we can think of, of stop words like articles or conjunctions like O, A, the, uh, the, those words are not very relevant for the algorithm, so we took them out. And this is the basic structure of the data set. You have a link for the news, you have a timestamp from when the news were, were published, and you got the news itself, so the text, and the label that tells us if the news is true or if it's fake. In this case, it's a data set of the, of the training, so we can see how I organized the data over here. By the way, um, this is a really important step for machine learning, creating this structure um, and in the most clean, in the most organized way. It's, it's something that takes time, but it's really worth all the effort. So take your time, take your efforts working on the data sets, uh, sometimes even more important than choosing some algorithm. Okay, so we have the features now. All right, so the features, like we mentioned before, in this case, are the words that compose such news. And I decided to use the tokenization using TF-IDF. I'm going to explain what it is. So TF stands for term frequency, and it defines the frequency of appearance of a given term in a document. So if I take a word, for example, apple, I'm going to count how many times the word Apple appears in a piece of text or a piece of news. Okay, so I gather this frequency and save it in a variable. And inverse document frequency, IDF, is the other part of the process, is a measure of how significant a term is within the entire corpus. So I'm going to take the word Apple and I'm going to analyze this word in all the news. Because if I only look at for the term frequency, I would looking for example 200 appearances of the word Apple, and my algorithm will say, mm, I think that this word Apple is very relevant for for a fake or a true news. And this might not be true. 
So we need the IDF to understand how significant a term is in the entire corpus. So we are not just considering its frequency, but um, its importance in the entire corpus, né? I mean, an entire data set of news. So I have the two equations here that defines the value of TFDF. And the IDF is implemented in a way that on a logarithm scale, so you start to avoid the division by zero. Okay. And taking all the these values, so we start to, to have an, uh, a word and a value, we start to build like a vocab. That is this vocabulary of size T containing the tokens after the tokenization step. So we have a word and we have a token to that word, and this token defines the importance of this word within our entire data set. Another tokenization process that I use is called word to vec And word to vec works in a different way from TF, IDF, in a way that represents their vectors in a context for a word. So it will take a word, for example, woman, and it will identify what is the context of this word given those texts? So they, this, this process can start making uh, semantic relationships. For example, woman with man, queen with king, dog and cat. And we start to see some, some skip grants, which are vectors né, of the type target word, context word. So we start taking separate words and analyzing the context of this word. We start to see what is besides this word? For example, if we take the word politics, what are the words that comes together with politics? And we start analyzing in true news situations and in fake news situations. And our algorithm, our machine learning algorithm, will try to learn these patterns um, revolving around the context of a certain word. Okay, so token weights in this case are represented uh, represents not each word by a vector that dictates its proximity to other words in a context. Okay, moving on, we got our third important step in a machine learning pipeline, which is the algorithm. And in our case, we are doing a supervised learning with the task of classification. We are to classify if a news is true or fake. So classification is a classic method of machine learning and it separates entries based on previous no attributes. So it's always necessary to label this data. So this is what we did. We take the news and we label the true, we label the fake, and we give it to the algorithm. So this method here uses pure statistics. Uh, you can't escape math again, so shout out again to math. It's important to understand some math concepts when building a machine learning. It's not like a prerequisite, but it's important to understand the math behind, the statistics behind, because we can maybe propose chains or maybe analyze which algorithm suits better a certain task. And I want to bring some examples of, of daily um, applications of this classification algorithm, which are, for example, spam filters. Uh, Google, the, Google, the Google search engine uses decision trees to uh, classificate the URLs that you search for, uh, classified documents, that it's our case, and sentiment analysis, for example, uh, taking a bunch of tweets and analyzing if that tweet is, is happy or angry, and moreover. All right, so we choose the passive aggressive to do this classification task. It's a pretty straightforward algorithm. It will take like a new document from the internet, piece of news, it will change its weights of the model and will throw away this, this new piece of information. So if you want to deep dive in, into the details, the mathematical details and all that, I can share the papers with you. But in simple words, this is how it works. You take, for instance, a new document called D and you put it into this hyperplan, which is represented by the X axis for the fake label and the y axis for the true label. So the more a document is near the y label, its probability of being true is in the y label, it's next to the y label actually. And if it's more it, and if it's next to the x label, 
the probability of it being fake is higher. Okay, so you take this document and you put it into this hyperplan. So, all right, I'm taking this document D and I'm going to classify it as a true piece of news. Uh, this black this black line here is the old weight of the classifier. So, uh, if you look at and in the right way here, you see that the document was in the true part of the model. And this is the, below the line is the fake part of the model. So it was classified as a true piece of news and it was classified wrong because it actually is fake news and is represented by this red X. So the, the algorithm will see that it did like a wrong classification and will change its weight. So it's going to calculate a new weight, which is the green one, and put into the model. All right, so we have here this, this W in green um, representing the new weight for the model. And you can see that it is calculated. This, this vector is calculated using a loss that is represented by this L. And D, which is the weight itself of the, of the piece of news that was classificated. So it takes the old weight, which is the black vector here, and it transposes in the graph so you can get like a new weight, a more precise weight for the model itself, which is represented here by the green line. Okay. Okay. So this is the pipeline summary of the machine learning process we did. We did like a web scrape using the Python scripts, okay, to compose the training data set and the test data set. And the pre-processing and the tokenization with TF-IDF were part of the natural language processing step, okay? Next, we have the training step, which produces an output, which is the machine learning model. And we can use the data from the test data set, okay, the tokens that we got from the test data set, to make the inference, which is the step that we take the model, we put some input data into it, and we get some output metrics to check if we can predict data in a good or in a bad way. So we can get some metrics like accuracy, precision, recall, and F1 score, all right? And now we finally get to our demo time. All right, so here I am at my Jupyter Notebook. I don't want to just throw code. Uh, I know that it gets hard to understand what is happening here, but I just want to focus on some important things here. So starting with the, the lips that I use, so NumPy, Pandas, CSV, to import all the data and organize, this is part of the pre-processing step. So I'm taking all the data that I gathered with the web scrape step that I did with other Python scripts, and I'm organizing the data in a very clean way. Okay, so this is all cleaning steps. And this is the part that I did the features extraction that consists of what the TF IDF did, all right? So it's important to emphasize here the NLTK lib, okay? So you can do many, many things with the NLTK uh, lib. It works for natural language processing workloads, Okay, so you have TFIDF, you have WordTovac and many other important um, NLP stuff here. All right, so what this part does is it takes each word of the data set that we created and attributes a token to it. So we can start to understand which word is more important or not so important in our data set. And we finally did the training of our passive-aggressive passive aggressive classifier. And in this part, we can see a very nice picture here that shows the accuracy for our model. And this is a confusion matrix that shows how well our algorithm did, okay? So you can see here that 96% of the labels that are really fake were classified as fake. And only 4% of those news, of news that were fake, were classified as true in a wrong way, okay? And you can see in the line below that news that were true, okay, so true news, were 12% of the time classified as fake, and 
88% of the time classified as true in a correct way, okay? So this gives us an accuracy of 91.73%, which is really good for the, such an, a quick and fast algorithm. Uh, by the way, the, the training happened like 0.2 seconds, just to have some, some information. Okay, so the precision was at 0.95, the recall at 0.87 and the F1 0.91. So this is our all metrics for a machine learning algorithm, which is something very, uh, very important for our study here. Uh, something else that I want to show you is I want to bring you this table, which shows us like a ranking of important words. Okay, so this this was a case study for Brazil. So you have all these words in Portuguese. All right. But you can see that you have the 50 tokens that are more probable to appear in fake news. Okay, so the more negative is the weight, the more this word um, is important to classify a new, uh, piece of news as fake, all right? So you have all this here, all those words, and you have the same for the true tokens, okay, in case of the, the true news. So the more positive is the weight, the more this word is important for the classifier to classify a news as true, all right? Okay, and we did some other things here that we would like to compare the passive aggressive with other algorithms. And I did this comparison with the decision tree classifier, the random forest classifier, the SVC support, support vector machine, and the logistic regression, okay? So we, ha we had some results over here, and you can see that the passive aggressive did well. Actually, it did better than all the other options for the accuracy, for the F1, and for the precision it got behind the random frost classifier and the logistic regression. But when you take the F1 in account, which um, um, with, uh, leverages the accuracy, the precision, and the recall, you see that it got better than everyone else, okay? So the passive aggressive did like a, a really good job for this task. And all right, so right now I want to show, show you something else that we didn't actually talk much about, but I think it's something that is better showing, okay? And this is the knowledge extraction part. Okay, so we have like all this, this algorithm performing good to detect if a piece of news is fake or true, but it's important to understand the structure of this news. So this is why I used a um, not supervising algorithm called TSNA, okay? So it's a T-stochastic neighborhood abiding. And for this case, I did a different tokenization step called word to vec that we talked before. Okay, so there are some nice things that we can show here. For example, this is like a cloud of words uh, in our case. So we're taking, for example, a true piece of word, you know, with a token associated to it and understand what is next to this, to this word. So we take like a 2D plan, we put the word in this plan and we start to see what is in the side of this word. We start to see the context of this word that we talked before. This is something that the word to vac gives to us. So looking to at this picture, you can't see many information. You can only see that there is the true label and the fake label. So it makes sense with that ranking that I showed before. Um, but this is a different metric here. We are not looking for the TF IDF, but we're looking for the word to vac which give us the context of the word. We can take this picture and analyze in a more specific way and we can start seeing things like this. For example, I have here a plot of the true features that were very important to classify a piece of news as true, okay? So you, you can start seeing that there are some words that comes together certain times and it's hard to see because you have like too, too many words, but you start to see that some words have like a context in them. And the times they appear, they usually appear with other words together. And the algorithm can start to understand that through news, for example, takes the word 
Politica, which stands for politics in English. And it can, in case of true news, you have different words besides politics. And in case of fake news, you have different words besides politics. Okay, so in this way, we can start to see that the algorithm can use this context to make this separation and classify a piece of news as true or as fake. So we can see something like this in case of the fake news. All right. So for fake news, we see uh, lesser words, but you can see that the groups are different here. All right. This is what is important to identify in this kind of pictures that the TSNA gives to us. Okay, so going back to our conclusion, we can now talk about our results and what we achieved with those tests. So in less than 10 seconds, it was possible to train a passive aggressive model and classify 9,400 news never seen before with an accuracy of 92%, which is pretty good. Um, there seem to be some lexical patterns in Brazilian news I'm not sure if this is the same for, for example, English news or another country news, but in Brazil, it seems to be some lexical patterns that makes possible this differentiation and you can classify true news from fake news with ease, okay? So I know that sometimes you can fall into traps and uh, a true news can be classified as fake or a fake news can be classified as true. But well, this is the point of such application. It's too easy the job of classify a huge amount of, of news. So you can leave the more challenging news to um, a more human approach, let's say. Okay? Uh, the model was trained with news from a period up to five years ago, and it was able to classify more recent news with great accuracy, which leads us to some clues about how a um, machine learning model works for this case. You do not need to be uh, feeding this algorithm with news uh, that are recently published, okay? You can use old news and it will start to create uh, those maps with patterns and you can apply these patterns identification for newer piece of news, okay? And finally, for future works, we can start talking about web applications, bots, APIs, and more, okay? So what and how would be the adoption of a classifier in social networks? How we could put this kind of feature into social networks and do like a fast classification of news that are being shared, for example. And a very important question here that I bring to you so we can all go back to what we're doing uh, with this in mind is an ethical and social discussion, like how to ensure the reliability of the training data. Because someone needs to be telling the computer which news are true and which news are fake. And this brings us to an ethical discussion that is of extreme relevance and it should be really talked about and studied sometimes even more than the application itself. Okay, so this sums it up what I had to talk with you today. Uh, it's been a pleasure being here and I hope that we see each other in the future. Stay safe. Bye-bye.